Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm the software developer behind Mongai as well as its predecessor, Conti. Mongai is a digital manga processor designed to both process and organize scans for optimal viewing on an e-reader device. It also has features if you just read your digital manga on your laptop. So today I wanted to give a demonstration of how to install Mongai, how to use it, and give a real-world example of processing a full series using a single command. First off, when you download Mongai, it will be a zip. So you will unzip the zip, go into the folder created, and you will see four files. This file here is the end user license agreement. The README has good instructions on the other software you have to install before you can use Mongai, as well as step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the program. And then these two files here are the Mongai executable Java files. This one, Mongai.jar, is the main program. It's command line only and contains all of the brains behind the software. And Mongai GUI provides the graphical user interface to Mongai so that people who prefer a GUI to a command line interface can use this instead. So we're going to go ahead and launch the GUI by double clicking it. When you first run the program, it'll give you a welcome screen. And this screen will have two instructions that you have to do before you can run the program. Uh, one of the things you're going to have to do is create a settings file called a dot properties file and this file will be optimized for your particular e-reader device as well as your computer's operating system. So this file will set all the settings for the size that you want the images to be outputted to, the format that you want to output to, and a bunch of other settings. Um, the other thing you're going to have to do is get a license before you can run Mongai. Now every person is entitled to a free 30-day trial license that we will get to in a second or you can purchase a full license from the website. So let's go ahead and launch this license utility. It's going to give you the prompt that to request a free 30 day trial all you have to do is put in your email and hit submit. So I'm going to put in my personal email and hit submit. And there we go. The license has been sent to me in an email attachment. I just have to check my email and copy the attached license file into the local directory. Now since I've already gotten that email earlier, I'm just going to get the license file and copy it to the local Mongai directory. Alright, so now the program is licensed to run. But before we can run it, again, we have to create that .property settings file. So Mongai should automatically open up to the settings tab. So you just have to click new. Select your e-reader from the list of e-readers. In this example, I'm going to do it for my Kindle DX, but obviously there's a lot of different devices supported here. And if your device is not listed, you can use the default profile or you can submit a request to me and I'll add your device to the list of available devices. So Kindle DX, you can collect the destination of where you want to save this file. I'm just going to leave it blank so it creates it right in the same folder as Mongai and hit create. And right here is all the settings. If you want to get a better view of them, you can just expand the window. All of this gray text describes what each setting is does and the different values you can set and what values are recommended. And here are the actual values. So here is the width of 824 pixels. As described here, the width is the width of pixels of output images. Here you also define if you want to trim the outside border, if you want to trim the white rows and columns within the image, what color mode you want to do. In the case for this Kindle, we want to use a 16 level grayscale color table and output the images as PNGs. Uh, as you can see, there are a whole lot of options. All of these are optimized already for the Kindle DX, but you can change whatever you want. For example, I don't necessarily have to have PDF output turned on. I could have set that to false and I'll just be using image folders as the output instead. Read through everything, make sure you're happy with all the settings, hit apply, and we're good to go. Now let's go over to our run tab, which is where we specify the series that we want to process. So first off, we have to pick the parent folder. Parent folder is the folder in which all of your manga scans are located for the series. Let's take a look at that folder here. In this case, I have a folder called Umi no Misaki. 
and that folder contains all of the scans of that series. Now these scans are downloaded directly from the internet. They have not been organized or pre-processed in any way. So the user is not required to do any special renaming, any special organizing. You just download them all to the same directory and Mungai will handle all of the organization for you. As you can see, most of these are volume archives. So if we take a look at volume two and see what's actually inside of it. It contains a folder for each chapter of volume two. And each of these folders contains all of the scans of that chapter. So pretty standard stuff. The only manual organization I did for this example is I created a folder called V11. This represents the chapters of volume 11. I did this because volume 11 of this series has not been released in Takaban yet. So the only way that it would have this volume information is if I give it to it manually. So I just created the folder V11. I dumped all of the chapters that I know will eventually make up volume 11. And that's enough for the program to know that all of these chapters are associated with that volume. Alternatively, I could have just left these chapters in the same folder as the rest of these files. Mungai would have determined that the chapters are close to each other in number, but it wouldn't know which volume they are part of. So instead of binding them as volume 11, it would have bound it as a fake volume, so volume A or volume B or something like that. So let's go ahead and get ready to run. We're going to set our parent folder to the folder containing all of the manga for that series. So, documents, manga, Misaki. Put in the title of the series and specify where I want all the Apple files to go. So, I have a folder called manga Kindle DX, and there we go. So the input is there, the output is there, that's the title. These other two tabs over here are advanced settings and options you can use. For the most part, you shouldn't really need them. You should only need to use the settings specified in this tab and then these settings right here. Now before we actually run the program, you might want to go ahead and save the job. And saving the job records all these settings in a database so that later on if you get more chapters for this series or if you just want to process it again you can quickly load the job from the table and it repopulates all of these text areas with the proper settings. So now let's run the program. Click in the big run button. The run window here will show all of the output live. I'm going to expand to make it easier to read. The first thing it does is print out the settings that it picked up from that dot properties file and it is organizing your manga series, which means it's, it went into parent folder, went into all the archives and folders, extracted everything out, determined which folders were image folders, parsed volume chapter information from all those folders, determined which volumes they belong to, and then what you get here is a folder interpretation in which you see volume one, this was the source of volume one, and this is the output name. So from this long name that includes this, a number that is not important to the series, uh, other information that is not important to organizing the series, it was able to pull out this is volume one, chapter one through nine. Uh, you can see for volume two, all of those individual chapter folders picked out the information, volume two, chapter 10, volume two, chapter 11, and all of those chapter folders will be bound at the end of the program in correct order from chapter 10 to chapter 17 or chapter 18 into a single volume file. So once it's done the publication level organization determining the volume chapter information of the source archives and folders, it moves on to determining the volume chapter page information of the scans in each one of those folders. So what you get after it has determined all of that information, you'll see that for each folder, it'll give you the order in which the scans will be placed. Now internally, the program is aware that this file right here, for example, is volume one, page 185. Um, 
that isn't too important to you right now since even a, a normal alphabetical sort would have sorted these in the correct order regardless of knowing that this one refers to a volume number uh, this 82 right here refers to a page number but um, that type of artificial intelligence will be important later when it is incorporated into a reader rather than into a processor so you can see here all of the every folder all the scans were interpreted uh, credit pages are placed at the end of a folder. Uh, if there was a cover or an insert, they'd be placed at the beginning. Um, in this case, this is a good example of where AI comes in. It says volume 3, chapter 43. That, that C right there really should have been a P. So internally, it's actually aware that this image right here is volume 3, page 43, not chapter 43. So scroll down through and there's a lot of scans that had to be interpreted. One thing I wanted to point out is that early on it determined let's see if I can find it it determined an in-volume bind for volume 8 chapter 66.5 into the volume 8 folder. What an in-volume bind means is that this chapter chapter 66.5 is part of volume 8 but right now they're two separate entities so normally when they're two separate entities, all that you could do is either place this chapter 66.5 before the main volume folder or after the main volume folder. But since the program is aware of exactly where within this volume 8, chapter 60 through 67, where chapter 66 ends and chapter 67 begins, it's able to place chapter 66.5 precisely between those two points. So you can see when it actually does the image sorting for volume 8, it has placed the scans from chapter 66.5 after the last page of chapter 66 and before the first page of chapter 67. That is something only possible when you have the artificial intelligence that can tell the volume chapter page information for each digital scan. So let's take a look at what it's currently doing. There's four stages to processing. The first one is pre-processing, and that's just getting the images ready to be processed by the program. It, uh, it fixes any erroneous data that might mess up processing later on. As you can see here, it constantly shows a time estimation of how much time it thinks that it has left to finish that stage. It also shows how many threads are running. The program is multi-threaded for both folder level and image level parallelism, meaning that multiple folders can be processed at once and multiple scans can be processed at once. And the number of threads that the program uses is based on the specs of your computer that it can detect. In my case, since I have a quad-core hyper-threaded processor, it was able to determine that it could use eight threads to do the work. Obviously, the more threads you use, as long as your, your hardware supports it, the more work can be done in a smaller amount of time. So right now it's doing the main image processing, stage three. This takes a lot of time. It's doing all the resizing, rotating, converting color pages to grayscale, trimming borders, trimming inner portions, and all these other image operations in order to make the scans optimal for the e-reader device I picked, which in this case is a Kindle DX. So depending on how big your series is, how many scans it has to process, and how fast your computer is, stage three can take a pretty long time. In this case, it says I have 13 more minutes to go. So I'll go ahead and fast forward this video to when this main processing is done.